Let's review the mission details. As you know, a terrorist group called Red Falcon has been carrying out limited strikes around the globe. We've confirmed reports they've set up shop on the main island of Galuga, following the meteor event earlier this year. The Federation immediately dispatched the GX Army, as they were in the vicinity for military exercises. They seemed to be making headway until three days ago, when we lost contact. You're kidding. Gen 10 is the strongest unit in the Federation Army. No way some fringe upstarts took him out. While it's still unconfirmed, we should assume the worst. Apparently the Red Falcon are more powerful than we realized. Speaking of which, our science division has some troubling intel of their own. Dr. Drake. The Federation's interstellar satellite network detected a gravity anomaly. Something on Earth emitting gravity waves strong enough to circle the planet. Their source coordinates align squarely on the Galuga Archipelago. This gives us reason to suspect the Red Falcon are developing gravity weapons. Gravity weapons? The Federation banned them decades ago. That's right, Lance. We can't risk destructive power of that magnitude falling into the wrong hands. My weapons division at Henriksen Industries confirms those readings are consistent with the components of a gravity bomb. Even just storing that thing improperly could cause tectonic shifts, climate disturbances, or worst case, a potential black hole. Bill, Lance, given the situation, I think it's clear why the Federation enlisted our EMC Contra unit. Your primary objective is to engage Red Falcon ground forces, confirm the source of those gravity waves, and disarm it. If at all possible, locate the GX army and report back with their current status. There's a Red Falcon stronghold not far from your drop. Infiltrate the base and apprehend their lieutenant. His field intel will help determine our next move. A remote hideout, missing super soldiers, and a doomsday weapon. Hell of a Friday. Time to introduce ourselves. Hell yeah, brother. Take an enemy fire. It's going down. That's strike one. It's all three by my count.
known Condor had arrived when the entire jungle caught fire. <laughs> it's been a while, Bill. What are you doing here? We're here to save your ass. If the EMC was going to stick its nose in this operation, they could have at least have sent a small arm. Looks like the small army couldn't handle it. So here we are. <laughs> I suppose so. At any rate, stay alert. These guys aren't messing around. What's the sit rep iron side? Where are your guys? I lost contact on running advanced recon. Probably signal jammers or something. I'm not worried. Put that in your I'll keep in touch. Just in case things get too hot for you, Connor. I heard Stanley's update. Let him worry about the GXR. You two focus on finding the enemy base. Roger that. Knock, knock. Entry point, uh, <clears throat> located. We cleared... Copy that. Falcon is obviously on alert, but we haven't seen anything unexpected. Apologies, Commander. We should discuss the chopper attack. Yeah, we should. How'd they get a missile past our sensors? That's it exactly. It wasn't a missile. What? Whatever it was, our scans indicate organic matter. Organic? What exactly does this mean, then? It means we have a good opener when we find the guy in charge. I'm ready if y'all are. Resume the mission. Locate Red Falcon's lieutenant for questioning. We'll update when we know more. Over and out. They don't mind if I borrow a hover bike. No time to waste. Anymore. Who the hell are you? Talk fast, soldier. N name is Bradley. I'm just a merc, you know? Signed up for some easy money, but these guys are terrorists, man. The other guys were brainwashed or something. They're like freaking zombies. What about you? I guess I'm different. Fuck. 
me up for some weird experiments. That's why I'm getting out. Now! So how about that? Can you get me off this island? Please? Strap in, Merc. Help me find Red Falcon's lieutenant. No way! You don't understand. Someone let me out! They're trying to kill me! I gotta get out of here! This guy for real? See? Thanks for the help, but I gotta get out of here! Well, you still owe me. like this has to have a data center or something, right?
looks promising. The lieutenant? Has <laughs> he had work done? Riser to HQ, do you copy? Little update, the lieutenant turned into some kind of monster. We're here, Major. Sounds like Red Falcon is using biological weapons technology. On the positive side, we located their data hub, and Lance is hacking it now. That's generous phrasing. If anyone at HQ has suggestions, I'm not above asking for help. Looks like you're in. We'll begin analyzing the data. There's another facility north of your current location, just past the local village. This data suggests it's a laboratory. Our best shot at information regarding those gravity waves. Village? Can't still be civilians there, right? Officially, they evacuated after the meteor shower, but... We already know that report is less than accurate. Don't love the sound of this. Heads up, I'm accessing security footage of an unknown operative. You boys aren't alone. We'll be careful. Regardless, we'll head for that village and let you know if we find anything out of the ordinary. and load.
Hey, kid, are you from this village? You shouldn't be here. But you're not what you think. It's making us look bad. The guy in charge of Red Falcon? I am Baramis, the vanguard bringing order and justice to this planet. Just had to post about this island vacation first, huh? And who are you? Two soldiers? To stand against my unstoppable forces? We're Contra, the Earth Marine Corps' finest. Contra? Is that so? I will look forward to our next meeting. She shouldn't face him alone. I mean, we were headed that way already.
What the hell was that? A creature from beyond the stars. I tried to warn you. Hey, you're the kid from before. What are you doing here all alone? I am Ariana. My people protected this island for thousands of years. After the meteors fell, the village was attacked. I've assumed my tribe's sacred mission. Then that man, Varanis. Not a man, but yes. He is a being from another world who arrived that night. He controls the Red Falcon soldiers. As if they'd lost the wills of their own. You catching all this, Doyle? I am indeed. Commander, this is the situation we were afraid of. I'll continue my investigation in the field. Understood, Lucia. Try to link up with our Contras once you arrive. Where's Varanis now? He was too fast. I lost him in the climb. That big ugly monster came out of there. No telling what else is going on. Riser is correct. For the time being, your mission is unchanged. See if there's any leads on gravity weapons in the lab. I'm coming with you. Sure, kid? It's gonna get gnarly in there. It's not any safer out here. I don't think we have a choice. But don't let her out of your sight. Sheesh. Ray graduates academy and you're already adopting another one, huh? Relax, Pops. This isn't Uncle Bill's first rodeo. There's no time to waste. You heard the kid.
Okay, team, I'm on site. Just found an entrance. What's the situation? Already? Didn't know the EMC had high-speed transport that could slip Red Falcon's defenses. <laughs> Doyle's holding out on me. The EMC doesn't. Exflow, on the other hand. Exflow? Then you're a secret agent. So what? We're just your side hustle? Actually, you can thank an Exflow initiative for your confidence. We named it and everything. Yeah? Then maybe you can tell us why that Varanus crew could hurt it. Afraid I can't really say. But Varanus poses an interstellar threat to our planet. So Exflow is very interested. Evaluating that threat is why we're all here, remember? Time to get back to the mission. Yeah, we kind of have our hands full here, too. I suspect gravity weapons are only the beginning. If you find any information, radio in. You bet. in here. Sorry if I'm late. Impressive work, though. Commander Doyle, I've accessed the Red Falcon system. You ready, Daniel? Opening a transfer into the Federation's network... now. I hear you. Running analysis. This seems promising. Data regarding an object with massive energy readings. This could be the X-Type artifact. I hypothesized it could be somewhere on the island. Meaning, the gravity anomaly was no weapon at all. Lucian. I'm well aware of the implications. Hey, X-Flow. Care to share with the rest of the class? What's an X-type artifact? 
Our data indicates it's an extraterrestrial object brought to Earth thousands of years ago. There's a lot we don't know, but it definitely houses an incredible amount of energy. Enough to cause those readings. If it's on Galuga, it's likely what Varanus is after. Our that is the Lemris. What my people call the Seed of the Gods. It's why we must defend the island. It's sealed in a sacred temple deep in the mountains. Only a few of my tribe are able to open the gate. But after my village was attacked, they're gone. The Lemris cannot be reached. We need to at least try, before Varanus finds a way. Even with Ariana's help, crossing that mountain range on foot would take days. Come in. Do you copy? Damn it, Raza, where are you? We copy, Stanley, but we're a little busy at the moment. I found the GX army. We've been fighting monsters. I could really use some extra firepower. Monsters? Yeah. Turns out Galuga has a real alien problem. My men collapsed. Like they've been shut off. Falcons loaded them onto a train and are transporting them into the mountains. What the hell? So, you guys up for a rescue mission? Train, huh? Sounds like we found our ride. Sending our coordinates. You saw the readings, gentlemen. We now know without a doubt that we are under threat of an alien invasion. Does this warrant reopening the G initiative? This scenario is the reason the protocols exist. I'm afraid the underlying technology still eludes us. In early trials, that is. We'll need Henriksen's finest minds dedicated to the project. Yes, of course. Hmm. Another hand? Like hell are we piggybacking up and down this thing? You keep the sky safe. We'll go low.
So, you bastards like to fly, huh? Let's go! Soldiers, standing room only. I'm a sitting duck here. Still worried about getting sniped, huh? I'm telling you. <laughs> God can't catch a break.
Nice of you to join us. I'm not gonna get taken out by some stupid insects. This is the temple your tribe was protecting? For thousands of years, only chosen warriors from our tribe were able to pass through this gate. It's still closed. That means we got here before Varanus. We should get inside then. Wait! Only those chosen by Lemris can unseal the gate. True warriors who would stand against great darkness. Anyone else dies. Huh. <sighs> that was close. This Lemris artifact really is inside. We need to secure it. True warriors chosen by Lemris. All right, Contras. Care to test a theory? This is our cue, huh? Hey, Lemris. Open up. <laughs> that actually worked? Theory my ass. How much does x -Flow actually know? Afraid that's top secret. For now, Varanus cannot reach the Lemris. Incredible. Let's attack aggressively. Next. shooting at me.
done well to come this far. Who the hell are you? We've met once before. At the yeah. end. Wrong answer, pal. First, prove you are worthy to enter these sacred halls. Awakened as a Contra. You know my name? Of course. I am Beowulf, the first human Contra and guardian of the Lemris. My spirit resides within the Lemris, waiting to guide those who have awakened. The first human Contra? Then you are the progenitor of the Contra gene! Contra gene? This guy was a statue five minutes ago. This is the focus of my research at Exflo. It's a genetic sequence found in warriors with preternatural abilities, like you and Lance. We realized that something, an X-type artifact, was influencing human evolution, altering our genome in this specific way. Based on ancient writings across several cultures, these unique warriors seem to be called Contra, and were referenced alongside an alien civilization. I theorize that this civilization must have sent the artifact, which we now know was Lemris, for the purpose of creating Contra. To continue our research, Exflow formed a special unit in the EMC for soldiers found to have the Contra gene. Makes us sound like a cosmic experiment. As you said, Lemris has been influencing the souls of humanity since ancient times. I've watched over Earth since the dawn of civilization, waiting for warriors who could be deemed Contra. Contra is a quality bestowed by the Lemris on behalf of the soul. To be chosen is to become a guardian, a protector. The soul? Are they the beings who created the Lemris? Eons ago, across the cosmos, two races waged a terrible war. On one side, the Zagard, a cruel empire seeking to assimilate all sentient life into their hive mind. Opposing them stood Sol, a civilization who considered free will to be sacred. However, the Zagard's cunning threatened to overcome the Sol, so they placed their legacy inside the Lemris and concealed it on Earth. My people died protecting Lemris. Why is Varanus after it? The Lemris contains the totality of souls' knowledge and history. If it is destroyed, they will be wiped from existence. Lemris can also manipulate gravity. Zagard's primary means of intergalactic travel is to open wormholes and use folding space to instantly cross great distances. However, Lemris creates a protective gravitational field around Earth, preventing wormholes from opening within it and making a full-scale Zagard invasion impossible. A force field around Earth? Lemris is definitely the cause of those gravity readings. Varanus wants to steal power from Lemris by draining it of energy. Once the shield is gone, Zagard forces can mount a full-scale invasion. If you cannot protect the Lemris, all is lost. Beowulf, tell us, where is the Lemris? Seek the altar. Looks like someone forgot to shut the door behind him.
What the hell? No! I should thank you. Those wretched souls made it impossible for anyone to open this temple. Except for Contra, that is. Baranus! Should've known that wasn't Stanley. He seemed almost likable. I'm glad you were able to speak with Beowulf before I secured the Lemris. So you can comprehend the totality of your defeat. <laughs> no! You cannot! You heard the man. This is our show now. Varanus disappeared with the Lemris. No way he's waiting around for us. He's taking that ball and going home. Ariana, any idea where his base of operations is? No. Commander Doyle, do you copy? We could use satellite support. We're too far underground. Hang on. This giant space robot burrowed its way into the temple from somewhere. We can follow the tunnel! But it leads right to his doorstep. Worth a shot? Looks like break time's over.
this their hive? Time to throw a few rocks. did a number on your reputation. Catch your breath and meet us up ahead when you can. Time for revenge? Careful, you sound like a Contra. I'll see you topside.
god! I thought I wasn't gonna make it! This is not your day, soldier. Thanks, but I just gotta get off this island. Go find somewhere to lay low. We'll send a crew to find you once this alien situation is handled. Aliens? What the hell? Not sure if you can hear us, Command, but this is Riser calling in. We've located Varanus and are about to enter his ship. The Lemris is in his possession, and securing it is our primary objective. If Varanus succeeds, nothing will stand between the Zagard Empire and the destruction of Earth. I will not let that happen. You heard the lady. We're getting this handled. Talk soon. Over and out. I had hoped to see you again. You've proven to be worthy adversaries indeed. No time for the speech, bud. We're here for the battle. Oh, there will be a battle. A Zagarian war fleet is already assembled. I must simply show them the way. As soon as the Lemris is drained of power, the full might of Zagard will descend upon this rock. Your leaders will fall, your women will mourn, your children will weep. Then, as the cleansing flames fade to embers, silence. A shame you will fall here, never witnessing the glorious Zagard Empire! Cool story. 
Too bad the Lemuris ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Come, Contra. Let ours be the first battle of Zagard's triumph. Bad enough. Return. into Contra. Your kind cannot be allowed to proliferate through the cosmos. Die already. You will follow me into the void, Contra. He overloaded his system. Can we stabilize it? If we can't, all the energy drained from Lemris will be released in a single blast. One strong enough to knock the Earth off its orbit. I could shoot the core. No! no! Huh? I have something that might divert. What the hell is it now? On the radar. Right. The Guardian life they were growing in the lab. But without Brandis to control it. Damn. Get the best one. We aren't in its guts.
Eyes on the Lemurus. You're in charge of that. We'll keep the big guy occupied. Be careful. Come on. Who are you talking to?
I knew you'd pull through. Climb inside. Let's get out of here. Commencing return flight. Hold on. Lucia's still out there. Lucia, what's your status? Come in, damn it! Bad news. Varanus's device is spiraling out of control. If things continue, all the energy drained from Lemris will be released. God damn it! This is the wormhole generator function. If I activate it... Yes, Lucia. Enough energy remains in the Lemris to generate a portal to another world. If I pull this off, I can redirect the dangerous energy into space. You must already know this, but when the wormhole opens, you will also. There's no other choice, Beowulf. This is the logical conclusion. Wait, don't! Well done, everyone. That is mission complete. You have successfully defeated the spearhead invasion forces of the Zagar Empire. Another global catastrophe has been avoided. Commander Ironside, we're grateful for your assistance. I'm told a new unit is being formed following the loss of the GX army. You've been called upon to lead it. That is much appreciated, sir. I assure you the force will surpass Contra before you know it. <laughs> Looking forward to it. The Federation is also gathering a relief team. As soon as the area is safe, they'll begin reconstructing Galuga's ecosystems. I will return as well. I must locate the Lemris and return it to the temple. My mission is not over. Perhaps I will find Lucia as well. I'm sorry to say, her status remains unconfirmed. Nothing conclusive from our satellites yet, but the wormhole left behind a lot of distortion. Lucia's not dead. No way. Lucia's always got a backup plan. She'll find a way home.
You aren't going to shoot him? No, it's too late. He's already imprinted on Bill and Lance. Genetically remapped him for one purpose. Eliminate Contra. Time for Plan B. <sighs> Dr. Drake. I'm sorry about what happened to Lucia. We will continue to put in all our efforts to find her. All that can wait. Look at these results. Negative. Every last scan. Negative! This is a critical situation. The energy wave produced by Lemris is gone. In all probability, the energy has depleted completely. The gravity shield will disappear. Hello guys and welcome, I hope that you're doing well, my name is UGD King, or I play 4K, AK, I play 8K, AK, I play 16K, and during this video I demonstrated Contra Operation Galuga game running in 8K UGD video resolution, 8K video resolution gaming, 8K video resolution gameplay in Contra Operation Galuga. Galuga PC game with the help of Intel i9 9900K and single Titan RTX video card flagship Turing GP architecture by NVIDIA which is the flagship video card for the RTX 20 series video cards okay it was overclocked as you can see I'm using the Windows magnifier zoom tool because I'm running my desktop in 8k video resolution as well same resolution 7680 by 4320 in contra operation galuga 60 hertz is not available under this resolution even 1440p running at 60 hertz not available on my display it could be limited to the displays or it could be uh, pretty much limitation to overall no matter what kind of display you're connecting it to but 8K video resolution, uh, 5K video resolution, 6K video resolution, 10K video resolution, 5K video resolution, and 16K video resolution. As I show it to you, you saw it was locked to 30 hertz. Keep in mind that I'm going to test all those resolutions in Contra Operation Galuga. I'm a big fan of Contra Classic game, Contra Legacy game. It was the first platformer that I played on the Nintendo 8-bit console. What it used to call Dandy, uh, Chinese version, which was one of the best games that I ever played back in 1990s. And if you are a fan of Contra Classic game from 1990s on the 8 bit, 16 bit consoles, guys, you're gonna love the Contra Operation Galuga. As you saw, it has updated graphics, it's like running Unity 3D game engine. I highly recommend it for you. And uh, if uh, Contra Operation Galuga game supports NVIDIA SLI, due that it's running DirectX 11 API, I'm going to demonstrate two Titan RTX video cards in SLI and show you above 8K video resolution with two Titan RTX video cards in SLI. It's going to be a nice performance. So uh, Titan RTX video card is the first video card that was available to PC gamers to be able to squeeze Contra Operation Galuga in 8K video resolution and above, especially when we're talking above 8K video resolution benchmarks and gameplays that I'm going to demonstrate over the hdking.com or iplay4k.com, iplay8k.com. 
uh, go ahead and check it out those domain names guys for my projects so um, this is how the Titan RTX is running guys it was overclocked through the software through the MSI after burner um, home safe environment overclocked but keep in mind if you're uh, overclocking any of your PC hardware components you're doing it on your risk and expenses nobody gonna compensate you anything so as you can see I overclocked my GPU by 100 megahertz and my system, my video RAM by 1300 megahertz, but just because GDR6, you gotta multiply it by two, uh, which will be external effective frequency, 2600 megahertz additional overclock. So through the CPU overclock by 100 megahertz, I increased the pixel fill rate by 10 gigapixels per second. Uh, textual fill rate was increased by 30 gigapixels per second while I overclocked my GPU by 100 megahertz and bandwidth was increased by 120 gigabytes per second. So we went from 670 gigabytes per second all the way to 800 gigabytes per second. And Titan RTX was running GDR6 Samsung memory just like it's on a newer version of the RTX 30 series video cards such as RTX 3070, RTX 3080 video cards that's using GDR6 or RTX 40 series video cards such as RTX 4070, RTX 4070 Ti, RTX 4070 Ti Super, uh, and RTX uh, 4080 video cards that using GDR6 memory pretty much will be running at 780 gigabytes per second, which is 140 gigabytes per second higher than original NVIDIA Turing GP architecture flagship video cards was running, such as Titan RTX or RTX 2080 Ti video card. So they're going to use the updated revised version of GDR6 that's going to be faster by 120 gigabytes per second. But right now I exceed that through my overclock on the VRAM. So I just made made sure that we're going to run as minimum frequencies as GDR6 on RTX 30 series video cards and RTX 40 series video cards which is a little bit faster let me bring you guys back to stock frequencies that Nvidia envisioned for the Nvidia Titan RTX video card that we use today and you're gonna see exactly our pixel rate decreased by 10 gigapixels per second textual rate decreased by 30 gigapixels per second and bandwidth decreased by 120 gigabytes per second okay i9 9900k i was running only eight cores eight physical threads hyper trading technology was disabled in the bias of the motherboard to be able to keep the overclock stable 5200 megahertz per every single core 5.2 gigahertz per every single score external frequency multiplier 52 i'm using i9 9 generation intel processor which is intel 9000 series flagship uh, for gaming 9900k k stands for the unlock multiplier so i can push the 54 multiplier 56 multiplier unfortunately it's going to be unstable this is the maximum stable scenario for the uh, i9 9900k overclock at 5.2 gigahertz in home safe environment just on water cooler AAO. Today I'm using, by the way, one of the best water cooler AAO. As you can see, this is the image. It's going to be Corsair H150i Pro. It came with 360mm radiator and three Corsair fans. So it's cooling my CPU, my processor, Intel 9 Gen. Uh, and I put the liquid compound paste, liquid metal thermal compound paste by uh, Thermal Grizzly, the best thermal compound paste on the CPU. And I put the liquid metal thermal compound paste on the GPU. And uh, on the video RAM, I replaced the uh, thermal compound paste as well by the NVIDIA and I put the IC Diamond thermal compound paste, which is the second best after liquid metal. It's with a little bit of synthetic elements of the diamond in the paste. And uh, it's pretty much this is how I use on the Titan RTX. GPU was a liquid metal cooled with a liquid metal thermal compound paste, uh, but stock uh, dual fan founders edition cooler, air cooler as you can see by NVIDIA. But video RAM was IC diamond thermal compound paste and CPU was liquid metal thermal compound by Thermal Grizzly as well on top 200 millimeter cooler master fan, uh, cooling down the VRMs and system RAM because system RAM was running uh, at the best performance of the DDR4 system and DDR4. Let me real quick and demonstrate it for you guys. So motherboard ASUS Maximus 11 here, SD390 chipset, but Titan RTX was running eight X, which is eight lanes on the PCI Express Generation 3. Uh, it's set to 16 lanes in the BIOS. There is no other cards installed in any slots of the PCI Express. I also don't have the M.2 NVMe SSD drive installed in the motherboard. It's still doing that and um, I have two Titan RTX video cards. I 
place both of them and try one by one still the same thing guys 8x i also had two rtx 2080 ti video cards i tried them on the z390 chipset motherboard still the same thing it's running nvidia Turing gpu architecture just like that there is nothing wrong with this motherboard because i also had the motherboard z370 chipset asus maximus 10 here which is the previous generation same deal guys for the uh, rtx 2080 ti video card or for the titan rtx video Video cards while running single video cards or an SLI of course a SLI is not going to support above eight lanes because the CPU maximum supporting 24 lanes keep that in mind and 16 lanes per each video cards in Nvidia SLI is 32 lanes so the CPU doesn't support and chipset Z390 doesn't support 32 lanes but it's supporting an SLI two uh, video cards in running in 8x which is 8 lanes in PCI Express version 3.0 so the memory as I told you the fastest possible scenario as you can see below 33 nanoseconds this is unheard of as the system RAM DDR4 my bandwidth at its peak was 50,000 megabytes per second or 50 gigabytes as you can see so how to find out which memory is the best so pretty much bandwidth you, on the system RAM DDR4, DDR5, DDR3, DDR2 on any system RAM you're receiving the bandwidth through a frequency of the memory okay to the stick but latency you will receive by lowering your latency tightening your timings on latency cl11 so uh, right now i'm running the 1650 times 2 external frequency 3300 megahertz for the ddr4 cl11 so it's not cl18 not cl16 not even cl13 cl11 the lower value is better and when we're talking system rm ddr4 one cl step down which is tighter tighter is equal to around an average 200 megahertz in terms of the performance so for instance if I would be running DDR4 3200 megahertz CL11 it would be faster than DDR4 3400 CL12 keep that in mind or kind of equal uh, because uh, one step down is 200 megahertz all right so keep that in mind and to find out actually how fast your ddr4 you're taking the read write or copy bandwidth and you're dividing by a latency on the ada 64 cache memory benchmark and you're going to find out how fast the single nanosecond and how much bandwidth per nanosecond you can push and this is the best value okay uh, to go for it and this is how you're going to find out which system ram ddr4 uh, scenario is the best as again frequency comes the higher frequency the higher bandwidth but the lower latency the title latency in terms of the cl the uh, faster communication between processor and system ram and then you can find out how much bandwidth you can push per single nanosecond the higher amount of bandwidth in terms of megabytes gigabytes is better but the low latency in terms of the ns stands for the nanoseconds is better okay guys this part is explained i was using four sticks eight gigabytes it's ready for quad channel but i was running dual channel which is 128 bit but quad channel 256 bit four sticks ready for the quad channel by z390 chipset z370 chipset or intel 9 gen uh, cpu such as for the z390 chipset uh, motherboards doesn't support above dual channel so dual channel is a max 128 bit so you gucci golden with two sticks but whatever you're putting four sticks you're going to demonstrate even with cheapest possible system rem ddr4 the maximum possible bandwidth that can pushable by your cpu at those frequencies and uh, keep that in mind all right of course latency will be higher because the lower latency the better communication the lower nanoseconds keep that in mind the lower nanoseconds is better okay this was as you can see the fastest possible scenario for the ddr4 if you're going to find out how much uh, bandwidth i'm pushing for let me see on right let me bring the calculator and let me show you something let me zoom out i just brought the calculator uh, as you can see i'm using windows magnifier zoom tool a lot on the windows 10 professional operating system that i'm running today so let, let's go ahead and find out right bandwidth 50,000. 186 so this is the formula guys for you for the pc hardware enthusiasts pc overclockers pc gamers nobody talks about it but this is how you can find out how fast your uh system ram ddr4 for particular uh, task read write or copy uh, it does a lot of read and write copy not not always copy is great for the video ram gpu does a lot of copy 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 video ram and gpu but system ram and uh, cpu does a lot of write and, and read most of it so 50,186 megabytes this is 50 gigabytes my bandwidth out there under the memory system mddr4 divided by 42.2 nanoseconds 
and uh, per nanosecond I can push almost 1200 megabytes per second that's great 1200 megabytes per second okay so this is the formula guys so this memory was external frequency effective frequency as you can see 2500 megahertz times 2 5000 megahertz CL18 so this was one of the fastest memory out there or the fastest memory that was released as system MDDR4 by Corsair it's 5000 megahertz CL18 but it's unstable on any Z390 chips at motherboard that I tested I tested on gigabyte versions I tested on a couple ASUS versions including my ASUS Maximus 11 here this memory is unstable above 3800 megahertz no matter what kind of CL you're putting it it's not booting at all the reason why I think and don't blame me because I having four sticks even should probably try with the two sticks you would say uh, I try with the single sticks the best possible stable scenario when you increasing the frequency or overclocking your memory still unstable the reason why I believe guys because it's using the micro technology chips on the DDR4 and uh, when you're doing that, uh, it loves the uh, low latency but hates the high frequency. So I think I utilize it pretty well. Low latency CL11, but not as much as high frequency. 32 and megahertz kind of frequency on average. But this is maximum stable with the CL11, 3300 megahertz, which is the best possible results after all the overclocks that I tested and I did the memory benchmark, read, write, and copy, including the latency. And I use this formula to find out the maximum amount bandwidth that I can push per nanoseconds and I just kept that 3300 megahertz CL11 guys the best usually to, I'm running 3200 megahertz CL11 but it doesn't matter but it's sh shorting by 2 nanoseconds in terms of the latency but the same bandwidth because the same kind of 3200 megahertz to 3300 megahertz not too much a little bit increased by 500 megabytes per second by 1000 megabytes per second at the average but that's it while jumping from 3200 megahertz to 3300 megahertz just a little bit on bandwidth but also decrease on latency because still still using the same cl11 all right guys so uh cursor told me this memory is only a stable on msi carbon extreme motherboard z390 chipset guys i have some doubts we're going to find out because when you're going to go high frequency in terms of the system of ddr4 you want to use the samsung b die chips for the ddr4 they love about 4000 megahertz and they're system ram ddr4 5200 megahertz okay um cl18 using g scale brand um but somehow cursor went micro technology chip and i think you know it was their mistake but anyways uh we're gonna test it because i'm going to build a platform with intel 12 gen generation processors and the intel 14 gen generation processors such as such as intel 12 gen 12900ks processor and uh, top of the line from 12 generation and uh, a gaming processor and 14 generation i'm going to use 14900k and i will try to use the z790 chipset intel chipset for the processors and cpus and uh, i will try to use the ddr4 and ddr5 so we're going to have a lot of content over uhdking.com we're going to compare the ddr4 versus ddr5 it's going to be a great videos over uhdking.com go ahead and check it out plus we're going to find out if this memory is stable or not i'm going to create a video tutorial for this memory how to bring it to 3300 mega cl 11 it's pretty hard guys timing and everything i'm going to explain a lot of value for you because as you can see in terms of the nanoseconds per second this is the fastest one of the fastest system ram ddr4 memory uh, scores out there as results this is by the way the world's record system in 3d mark in 2018 3d mark fire strike ultra it scored uh, number 14 in the world guys and i scored much higher score than jz2 sen which is much better score uh linus media group linus tech tips which is linus itself and uh, uh nexus gamers i i scored higher than him as well it, it, it video is available over ugdking.com for you to check out all right guys uh, so if the cursor will lie to me throughout my benchmarks on 12 gen and 14 gen intel z uh, 790 chipset motherboard that supports when it supports the dr4 it supports all the way to 5300 megahertz easy so if, if this memory will fail that i will never buy the cursor memory system ram again they lie to me on system ram ddr1 ddr2 and ddr3 if they're gonna lie to me again never cursor again all right so this is what's up guys i, I believe cursor memory is kind of average and it's overpriced you can buy the patriot memory 
American another brand good brand and there is some other memories out there that uh, going to do much better result just skill is also kind of overpriced you can buy uh, different brands and uh, they're gonna be as good as those because they're all uh, using the Hunix or uh, Micron chips all those brands keep that mind all right guys so uh, graphic cards as you can see we wrote the Titan RTX to stock so this is the stock 24 gigabytes of video RAM GDR6 by Samsung 384 bits bus okay this is how it's called guys with eight cores eight threads and hyper trading technology disabled in the bias so when we're talking PC gaming we're talking about single jet performance in 2024 older games or even in 2026 2028 the results will be the same the higher single jet performance the better in PC games because as you saw every single my core will never have, were never utilized at 70 percent even and the average CPU utilization never even reach above 50 percent utilization at any times and conditions when scenarios like this you and you playing PC game most of it is going to be like in PC game there is no such a PC games in the 2024 that you can util that you that can utilize above 90 percent of your CPU if you're using eight core CPU no matter what kind of generation of the CPU of Intel keep that mind cannot utilize 90 percent it's going to utilize like 70 75 percent if you're going to use eight score eight threads eight um, cores physicals without the hyper training technology keep that in mind and uh, only those heavy games will be using the frostbite game engine such as battlefield 5 uh, battlefield 1 or battlefield 2042 every other games will be on eight cores eight threads will be like below 70 percent like around 50 60 keep that in mind if you're running 4k video resolution games in 2024 but if you're running above 4k video resolution as today i was running 8k uhd video resolution uh, which is a 7680 by 4320 pixels which is 32 megapixels that means that the higher video resolution the less CPU utilization so we're a Gucci with that as you can see the single uh, the multi-thread benchmark performance scored 4500 while I'm going to enable the hyper trading technology it's going to score around at 5 gigahertz it's scoring 5400 keep that in mind but as again we don't care about the logical chats that came for from the hyper trading technology because it's great in terms of the scenario when you're using all the CPU cores all the CPU threads and you are utilizing them at least 90% and above like 100% 99% those type of scenarios will be available if you're going to build up your system as workstation and you you're doing a lot of 3ds modeling 3ds animation and 3ds rendering on the cpu 3ds max can utilize 256 school, uh, cpu cores uh, cinema 4d application also another 3d rendering application and cpu capable application that can utilize 256 cpu cores as well blender can utilize 256 cpu cores as well so those application is great and you can uh, when you're doing the, in those type of application 3d rendering you would like to enable all the threads all the cores everything what is possible including the hyper trading technology and reach the maximum frequency stable but with all the cores better than turn down any hyper trading technology because even the logical cores when every single core every single thread utilized 100 percent will give you an advantage okay an advantage of hyper trading logical threads is uh, 2.753 logical threads is equal one physical thread or physical core when we are talking about the intel 9 generation processors which is intel 9000 series and today we're talking about exactly 9900k so running without the hyper trading technology disabled in the bias only eight physical core eight physical threads otherwise it should be 16 logical threads which is 16 logical processors in the bias all right guys everything what was explained to you all the numbers and this is the a 64 gp gpu benchmark while i compared the gpu and video ram versus the cpu and system ram as you can see video ram is about 14 times faster in our case ddr6 by samsung than a system ram ddr4 no matter what frequency you're running about 14 times faster but however when we're talking memory read and memory write for the ddr6 memory or any video ram uh, it hates to do that because the gpu is also hates to do the read and write it loves to do copy 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 and all what gpu does copy 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 and that's why video ram is set up 
for copy, copy, copy. So as you can see, system RAM in terms of memory read and memory write about eight times faster than the video RAM. But when we're going to go memory copy, memory copy on the video RAM is 14 times faster. Same rules will, ap will apply to the GPU versus the GP uh, GPU versus the CPU. CPU allows to do memory read and memory uh, write because it's all what it does. Copy, not a lot of copy it does, but video RAM and GPU allows to do copy, 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 and hate to do read and write. All right, guys. And as you can see, if you decide, if you let's say have two Titan RTX video cards in SLI like I am, and you will decide when SLI is not utilized, uh, you you can use the 24 gigabyte of video RAM as a RAM disk. It's a great idea, but however, RAM disk made out of the system RAM will be always faster than. Um, RAM disk made out of video RAM and the reason why because the memory read and RAM memory write on video RAM is much slower than a system RAM by about eight times okay keep that in mind but more about that information about the RAM disk will be available great video by the way while comparing uh, the RAM disk from a video RAM into the system RAM RAM disk or just SSD and SSD NVMe M.2 uh, is going to be a great video guys and you're going to find out the fastest storage that you can make in 2000 that you can make in 2024 will be the system RAM uh, DDR4 or DDR5 RAM disk especially DDR5 it's untouched the amount of uh, data it can transfer it can transfer easy around um, 30 40 gigabytes per second or 40,000 megabytes per second system RAM DDR5 RAM disk, keep that in mind. More about it will be available over ugdking.com. Another reason for you to thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget, guys, a lot of time, money, energy is invested. Today, you watch the whole walkthrough in Contra Operation Galuga game. I'm a big fan. If you Contra Classic, Contra Legacy fan, go ahead and grab the Contra Operation Galuga and seem to ask in $39 United States dollars. It's not worth it, but if you can find it in 2025, 2026 for $10 and below, I highly recommend you this game for the mobile gamers handheld devices and pc gamers just for those who play the special contra classic you're going to enjoy it same kind of game but much better updated visuals as you can see running on unity 3d game engine running directx 11 api and we already know the directx 11 api supports nvidia sli because nvidia sli was made directx 9 directx 10 directx 11 api however uh, unity game engine since 2022 or newer uh freezing when you're using nvidia sli so I'm, I'm going to test it with two video cards but whatever you loading up the game is freezing if it's going to be runnable i'm going to I guess as again show you two titan rtx video cards in two way sli and contra operation galuga that you don't want to miss and i'm also going to test 4k 5k 6k 8k 10k 12k and 16k video resolution but uh the spoiler for those who's curious 16k video resolution will be all only benchable but not playable but go ahead and check it out over the ugdking.com for more information because the titan rtx video card is the first video card they're going to go above 8k video resolution and all completely to 16k video resolution which is the maximum rendable resolution in pc games and all open source and commercial apis okay but more about it will be available in video 16k video resolution benchmark and contra operation galuga go ahead and check it out the gameplay in 16k video resolution i'm going to include video video comments down below and all the newer uh, video cards tests, all the newer processor tests in Contra Operation Galuga that I'm going to do as well as a benchmark will be attached in the video comments. So go ahead and check it out if you're watching it over our official YouTube channel, which is hugedeking.com. Go ahead and check out the video comments, guys. And I'm going to uh, submit there all the valuable and uh, information that are going to be related to this video. All right, guys, that, that's it. That's pretty much it today is march 22nd let me real quick and show it to you march 22nd 2024 9 43 a.m okay this is the world's record nobody completed contra operation galuga game in 8k video resolution as walkthrough on youtube so this is going to be the world's record and this is going to be the first walkthrough of contra operation galuga 
uh, it wasn't as a speed run, but I, I, I wasn't slow down as well. I was kind of in the middle. I uh, decided just to walk through. I decided first of all to demonstrate you the gameplay under 8K video resolution, but then I decided to completely walk through. But as again, it was a great result. As you can see, I, I, I was dead just a couple times throughout the whole game, which is a great result because the game, game is kind of complicated for the uh, Generation Z gamers especially, but the game is nice, guys. And a lot of people will be speed running this. This is what was not a record in speedrun, but it was the record a uh, contra operation galuga for the first gameplay on youtube recorded in 8k hd native video resolution and as well as walkthrough in 8k hd video resolution in contra operation galuga which is the world's record right now in the march of 2024 but it was a benchmark as well as gameplay so i demonstrated many values for you as again the reason another reason for you to thumbs up subscribe guys share this video with all your friends this youtube channel is totally worth it guys as you you can see I'm providing a lot of value to you from all kind of different angles and you can find something by watching this YouTube channel so I advise you to subscribe I invite you to subscribe as again don't forget to thumbs up I did a hard work and uh, a lot of time money energy is invested and uh, yeah we just benchmark everything was running great I highly recommend to play Contra Operation Galuga with the RTX 2080 Ti video card or Titan RTX video card based on the video RAM so go ahead and check out my UHD King benchmarks on their all kind of video resolution and contra operation galuga game and you're going to find out one rtx 2080 ti video card or rtx 3080 video card that will show the same performance as titan rtx rtx 3080 video card can be uh, pretty much available and can play with a lower amount of video ram because the titan rtx had 24 gigabyte of video ram today throughout this video and rtx 2080 ti video card or rtx 3080 video card is not going to have uh 24 gigabyte of video ram so always keep your eye at the video RAM utilization that I'm putting for you throughout my videos and all the information at the right top corner or any corners that I'm displaying for you guys is verified and corrected so you can take it to the bank and you can pretty much see how the well the first generation of the flagship video card did RTX uh 20 series video card flagship such as nvidia titan rtx video card and then you can compare how well it's going to do with your video card you can kind of uh receive the information of the average fps based on your video card hopefully a lot of data was provided as again my name is UHD king aka i play 4k aka i play 8k aka i play 16k have a good morning good uh good day good afternoon and i will see you guys till the next time